Yeah. Hi, Yogesh. I have turned on my camera, but looks like I'm having some network bandwidth. I just read a message that we have live stream and there are two options, leave meeting or got it. I, could, I clicked leave meeting, so I'm back again for a minute. So good. So we are uh, we are crossing 100 now on Zoom. So I think rest will have to then uh, you know, come for the, for the YouTube channel. Yeah. So we can get started now. I think uh, Ankita, if you can again make me the co-host so that in case there is anything required. Uh, I Perfect. So good. So uh, yeah, we can get started. Uh, just uh, uh, in case there is any background noise, you can you know turn your uh, mute on. So good. Uh, so good afternoon, everybody. A very warm welcome to our fifteenth uh, uh, bi-monthly webinar. Uh, my name is Yogesh Agiwal. Uh, many of you uh, know me. Uh, those who are meeting me for the first time, uh, I have. I'm not a trainer or a facilitator or from an HR or psychology background from the beginning. I come from a very long uh, IT background. So a computer engineer by qualification, uh, was in US for about uh, six years, uh, came back to India and joined Wipro and was there for a very long time. And while at Wipro, um, I got uh, the award from Azim Premji and uh, was invited to speak in some of the leadership programs that how was the, you know, how did you get the award? It was on best people management. And I started speaking about the practices. And then when I was in the program, uh, the trainer would say that, you know, whatever you are sharing has been researched by Richard Bartis and in my case, I would borrow the books. And I started realizing that there is so much of wealth available in human psychology, which I think businesses are not using as much as they should. So then I started, you know, bringing some of those concepts in my talk at Wipro. And that 90 minute session became sometimes, uh, you know, 180 minutes, sometimes even more than that. And I sometimes started spending an entire day at Wipro in the leadership program. And I did that for a couple of years. And in 2009, our HR said that, why don't you move inside the leadership department uh, full time? And that was my formal journey uh, in 2009. Uh, I did that for seven years. And then uh, in 2015, um, I started Crossover Leadership Journeys, which is a journey-based leadership program. And I'm going to give you a little bit of brief on what, what we do so you will get the context. Uh, but then uh, in today's session, I, I always felt that since I have had a chance to manage you know, stakeholders uh, across geographies, across uh, vertical, horizontals, uh, India abroad, uh, I I felt that I think this is one area there where there is uh, there should be a simpler way to manage stakeholders and a combination of uh, you know both mm. the functional side as well as the people side and so I, what I have done today and there, <laughs> we practice this you know with across our clients uh, uh, you know uh, both. Uh, the one which we uh, do for our own clients and we train our people on that. So this model that you're going to see is, is live in action. We have been using it for many of our clients. And you'll find this uh, very simple to use uh, in a very nice structured manner. And um, hope you all will like and find this useful. So let me uh, pull up the presentation. Um, we call our uh, programs as uh, this bi-monthly webinars as Leadership Chaska webinar and uh, those who know Hindi would know that Chaska is uh, uh, addiction, uh, but here it means it's an acronym, uh, Crossover Hosted Association for Skills and Knowledge Advancement, so C-H-A-S-K-A. -A. And we have Yogini with us today who really manages the Chaska WhatsApp group, which means that she will post the link here and you can join. We have already got uh, people from previous webinars joining us. Uh, so till the time we meet again, uh, which is uh, again in the month of uh, September, we are in July now. 
So September we'll pick up one of the leadership topics. Until then, uh, Yogini will keep sending you some very curated article videos, uh, and you can also ask her any questions that you are facing when you're applying. So, so through her, you can reach out to me. Uh, you can have any uh, you know questions you have about uh, applying, and all our programs at Crossover are very practical program, which means. Uh, it has a ready application to go back. So right after the webinar, you could actually go and start, uh, you know, applying that in real. Life. Yeah. So um, and there are two parts to it. One is building trust and stakeholder management. So building trust is an important element of stakeholder management, and uh, the name of the model that I'm going to introduce you to is called as uh, trusted stable. And stable is an acronym, but I'll talk about it as we go along. So this is like two, three slides. I've just kept it to you know tell you an idea of the kind of work we do. So if you look at this slide, there are two axes to this. One is the journey of an organization, and other is the level of an success level of an organization. So all of us, every organization hires people from all over the country, and everybody comes with their own experiences, own mental model. And there is an hybrid culture that gets created, and you get a certain result. But when we work with the client, we work on their uh, way they think, uh, their immunities to change, and try to bring in some alignment in the way uh, in their mental model and create an aligned culture that gives you a much more higher goal-oriented result than if you were not to you know do this intervention. And uh, when you look at any organization, you will see broadly they need three things: they need customers, they need talent, and they need execution. If you look at customer, uh, you know you essentially uh, start with how are you selling to the client? Are you doing consultative approach? Are you negotiating well? Are you growing your existing account? Are you able to influence them? Are you able to network with them? So that is the customer piece. Uh, to serve the customer, you need talent, which means do you have systematic way of developing people? So. A lot of managers don't really know how to develop people in a systematic manner. They've just learned it from their supervisor or from whatever experiences, but they have not been really taught in a systematic manner. So contextual leadership. Humble inquiries, how do you essentially uh, you know, use communication as source of ownership, innovation? Uh, and there is a very powerful book. I think all of you should read this book. And uh, I would uh, request Priya to post it on the post it uh, on the chat that it's called Humble Inquiry and Humble Leadership by Edgar Sheen. Edgar Sheen, who is like worked decades after decades on using uh, how a manager can use the language where he can inspire people. Very powerful book. Uh, then how do you engage, uh, you know, meaningfully? How do you give feedback? How do you do career conversation? So the talent part. The last is the execution part, which is. Uh, how do you essentially meet your commitment to the client? Not only just delivering to your promise, but doing beyond that, your ownership and accountability. And here is where we are going to now today touch upon building trust and stakeholder management. And as organizations grow, as we put complex solutions, uh, we really need to become influential and uh, influencing soul is in that direction. And as you know, as the organization grows, and I worked in Wipro for a very long time, and I, I can just tell you, as we keep growing, and I joined when we were not very big, and I could literally see in front of my eyes how silos were getting created. So it's very important for people to learn how do you manage uh, in cross silo collaboration, and to do all that, you need a central purpose. What are your values? Is your culture aligned to your values, and is your strategy, and with a overarching thinking of big picture and growth mindset yeah and then if you see below down it's all about how do we go about doing that you know so we would all elements of you know to make this programs for our clients in terms of sites uh, videos articles in person virtual session we have assessments uh, we have a psychological base of uh, disk transaction analysis and adlerian psychology so this is like the overall framework that we have for our clients and the way we go about executing is that you can divide any organization broadly into four parts you know so you've got campus hires associate mid and senior for each of these levels we have got different programs and uh, we look at four facets of leadership uh, team leadership self-leadership operational and organizational so 
self is how does a manage a leader manages emotions communication team leadership how does he inspire how does he uh, delegate operationally is understanding of uh, numbers business and organizational is how does he manage change and how does he collaborate and the way we do it is every month there are workshops and then we have a dedicated mentor who works with the participant to apply it in real life so i think priya is right here with us who is a, one of the very senior mentors so uh, the she sent an article video they have to submit an application of learning and then they continue for the next module and again we invite the leaders the ceo of the company to speak to the participant and this journey can be a 6 month journey 12 months journey uh, 18 month journey also we have done for some of our clients where we align this journey with the competency you know and this is how the whole thing works and now these are some of the webinars and i will i uh, will post this on the leadership chaska group so you can see the link here or you can go and subscribe to crossover leadership journeys challenge channel on youtube and you will find all the webinars there so if you google on crossover leadership journeys you can find that and very interesting topics that we have covered emotional agility in changing time being a talent multiplier uh, strategy to results uh, conversational intelligence by judith glaser unleashing productivity i think you all should see this video for sure you know this is like i can almost guarantee you that you can take 20% of extra time if you follow the uh, categories and plotting model that we teach in this particular uh, module uh, networking is a fantastic module i've done this with nisha uh, you know who is one of our senior trainers with us uh, conversation intelligence what with ravi chatterji so i also invite uh, you know part uh, speakers to come and join me in the webinar so uh, we have got on executive presence uh, humble inquiry meaningful engagements and you can see all these models are home created which means we have not borrowed it from any book or any google it's like all internal work of last 7 8 years you can see here so when we are influencing without soul it's very very powerful module i think all of you should take a look at this and the last month what we had is magic of ai in sales so this was a program purely webinar for sales people how they can use ai in that yeah so let's like jump on to you know today's session and uh, if you look at this phrase by you know angela vanner and since uh, it's a webinar uh, uh, i'm not really doing a session like the way i would do otherwise by engaging all of you uh, because i really have to cover quite a bit in 90 minutes uh, but i'll still in between you know get you guys so feel free to raise your hand so when you raise your hand you will come on the top for me so i can you know i you can speak in between if you like to add or if you like have any question so this is a very powerful uh, you know uh, phrase by angela vanner and uh, you know while many of us uh, you know when we are early in your careers or we have not handled large projects uh, we don't realize the importance of engaging our sponsors and if you don't engage the sponsors no matter how good you are technically how good you are at project management uh, the program will not get through and there are many reasons for that and we will slowly get into this uh, it is not just about your solution but looking at the entire ecosystem you know because there are many things that would require us to keep the sponsors engaged and uh, leading to that quote Uh, here is another quote which talks about that a successful leader keeps an eye on the vision can navigate unknown and focus on people just as much as on task yeah a key ingredient for that is the ability to build trusting and lasting relations with all the stakeholders so i just want to uh, maybe give a minute to all of you and maybe any reflection on the especially on the first first part of this particular slide you know and also maybe the second part so any thoughts any reflections that you have on this anybody can i can just add something to this yeah yeah please see what this quote really is uh, focusing on is that a leader firstly has to have the eye on the vision that means your goal you should know where you're going yes so going from a to b and b is known to you Yes. Then when you navigate the unknown, means there'll be a lot of chaos in between. Yes, yes. yes. A to B cannot be a straight line. It's all yes. a curved line. So the yes. moment you start deviating from the path A B, yes, your 
if your vision is aligned to your goal you will keep yeah. coming back in the same direction but yeah. if you don't you will go you will go haywire yes therefore yes. you will never reach a yeah. you never reach b which is your destination you may reach anywhere yes, yes, and that true. somewhere else could be better than b that's a different matter yes, yes, yes. yes you get me lucky that but but you won't reach where you want to reach so that's yeah. no no absolutely uh, sushil uh, completely agreed and then i think many a times when we are uh, you know running our projects i think the focus is so much on task that we don't focus on people not on the stakeholders as much yeah so if you look at some of these bullets i have just put in and this is like some of my own experiences of how i think uh, when you're dealing with your stakeholders you have to be keeping all this in mind you know so i think uh, we sometimes don't really understand the uh, the place from where the stakeholder say, stakeholder is coming from and our ability to first understand before you know before we uh, we understood could be the first starting point and many times i think we you know we don't acknowledge uh, the stakeholders what are their concerns uh, uh, you know and do you really you know think about you know like these are some some topics this point that we will i think explore as we go along uh, you know doing this and uh, i think the main model that I, i want to introduce to all of you is called as the you know trusted stable model and uh, and this is really my own experience of what i have seen uh, you know when i have dealt with uh, projects uh, ankit if you can just see uh, this subramanyam shivkumar's uh, uh, you know this background noise if you can mute uh, please uh, so uh, so structure and style you know so when you look at stakeholders i think understanding the structure of the organization uh, or the uh, you know depending on how complex your project is becomes the first part of the whole game uh, which means that who are the key players uh, you know what is their interest uh, what is the power that they hold so uh, in our rush to work on our own solution or on own deliverables we really don't uh, put this proper structure in place and i'll i'll talk about that as we go along and i'm just giving you an over overview of how the you know how the journey will look like for us today so first is structure and uh, there is a way to really map the structure also in terms of who is uh like you know even in the sponsors that we are talking about there could be some internal relationship between the sponsors and there could be some people who have got high power but they may not have high interest in the project that you are dealing with and there are valid reasons for that if we don't understand the structure then we miss we may miss out on uh putting our effort in the right direction and uh, if those people are ignored in some form Uh, that can create lot of delays in your project and when i am saying that don't misunderstand that there is any stakeholder who is deliberately trying to destroy your project that's not the point but if they are not satisfied with whatever is their expectation uh, there could be uh, there could be uh, a delay in the response from them and that delay could impact your project so understanding the structure of you know whatever you are working on is very important and every project will have their own structure so when i was working in wipro if i was uh, you know working in a particular geography or a particular domain every client would have a different uh, style of working so the structure comes very first thing uh, and you can see the stable is basically an acronym uh, so s is like structure and style now when i say style i think many of you must be familiar with uh, disk which is Uh, one of the most popular way to know uh, know the style of people uh, so today i'm going to cover this little bit so that you know the style of your stakeholder so if there is a stakeholder who is uh, say assuming uh, you know say c style you have to respond to the c style in a very different way versus the way you would inf- you know uh, respond to i style versus a d style or versus an s style Uh, and we also have our own style so you know there could be a very big mismatch between your style and the stakeholder style so we will look at that the second is if you and uh, since now i have got a chance to many a time meet lot of stakeholders and uh, you know kind of listen to what their concerns are they say that 
you know, many a times uh, there is not enough update, you know, when we really need it. And sometimes uh, when we pull up the people and ask them to update, they update so much that when there is no need also they'll update, you know, they'll like, so time and tide is basically the timing of the update and the tide of the update. Tide is like our low tide, high tide, you know, so when there is a real need of an issue that you're dealing with, you go in high tide, do too much of update to the, uh, to the stakeholder. But if things are going well, don't just bombard them with information because remember that Stakeholders are very senior people who have got so many things to handle and your update should not really bother them. You know? So time and tide is uh, the thinking around uh, when do I update and how much do I update? Yeah. So first is structure and style. Second is time and tide. Yeah. Third is uh, many a times, uh, you know, I keep hearing from stakeholders is that I think uh, they have not really told us the whole condition in which they are going to operate, which means that they have not articulated enough and they have not acknowledged whether we have got that. Yeah. So if we don't articulate whatever we are uh, expecting from the stakeholder or uh, the overall game of the particular uh, project that we are doing and get an acknowledgement from them that uh, is that all right from their side. So many times we, you know, make an assumption that, you know, maybe what worked with me in a different program will work me in the next program. So a reminder to us that I should articulate and get the acknowledgement is a, another important element with the stakeholder. And then bold and brief, which means that there will be times when, you know, you have to be bold about not being always saying yes to whatever the, uh, the customer or the other party is asking. So in front of the stakeholders, are you bold enough to take a stand? So many a times, if you are if you're not bold enough, you may still agree to do, but eventually the project will suffer and the stakeholder will eventually even know. So are you bold enough to take a stand in front of them? And when you're bold, don't talk about like too many stories to the stakeholders. Because remember, these are all senior people and you want to really use your time wisely with them. So be very brief when you're really doing that. And we'll talk about how to be brief. So structure, style, time and tide, articulate, get their acknowledgement and be bold only when it is required and brief in your communicating. And finally, if you really look at the statistics and the survey of uh, you know stakeholders, and if you ask them that, would you like to work with the team again? And you would see that the survey response is not as favorable. You know, there are not many stakeholders who really love working with the same team for the next project. They have said that we have not had a great experience working with them. So how do I leave a legacy where every stakeholder wants uh, wants them, wants uh, want, uh, want us to be their team? You know, so how do you leave a legacy with them? So I'll, So the trusted stable is, trust is the foundation which you're seeing below and then stable is, uh, you know, an acronym, which is S for structure style, T for time tied, A for articulate acknowledge, uh, B for bold and brief and L is for leave a legacy. Yeah. So, and the stable is also, you know, I mean, on a very side note, uh, it is like the stable that we, you know, have for horses and horses are one of the most faithful and loyal, you know, uh, animal that, you know, uh, are, you know, people use. So I, we can we can also relate to that stable. Yeah. So I'll take a pause here and maybe uh, unshare my screen. And just before I move forward, any thoughts on the trusted stable model, anything that you would like to uh, share with me before I go deep into one of each of those elements. I have a question, uh, Yogesh. Hi, Shashi. Yeah, yeah. When you say articulate and knowledge, um, do you mean stakeholders are not aware what they want, or is it the project team that is not able to articulate the project needs or the task needs or the initiative needs? The second one, the project team is not articulating enough and acknowledging uh, with the stakeholder. Uh, it could be anything. It could be the communication plan. It could be uh, the updates, it could be the reviews, it could be the, the approval mechanism, it could be the decision matrix, anything. Okay. okay. Articulate the project needs or the task needs or the initiative. Yes. 
Yes, and get a get a confirmation from the stakeholders that are you guys okay with what we are doing? Hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Because yeah. many a times we see that stakeholders also sometimes are not very clear as to what do they need. Yes. So I'm wondering if that is also covered here. Yeah. No. No. That we. Yeah. That because that I think is a. a uh, purview you know which possibly uh, you know i mean my own my always thinking around this is that how can we also get the clarity from the stakeholder if they are not very clear you know meaning uh, many a times if we are seeing a gray in that area i think we should also call that out and ask them you know if you are not getting clarity but here our our whole effort in the model is from our side that how do you manage stakeholders makes sense Okay. <laughs> so the onus is on us. Onus is on us. Yeah. Got it. Got yeah. It. Because what happens? I'll tell you. Uh, recently, when I was, uh, you know, leading a program in Bangalore for one of our uh, big clients, and they also had a similar complaint as to, you know, whatever ideas they give to the stakeholders, they don't get a proper response from them. And uh, I asked them this question that, you know, and since I knew the chairman, I said. uh you know have you ever asked your stakeholders what is the difficulty in implementing your ideas and out of those uh, 15 participants none of them even told me once that they have asked them so the point is that we assume that the stakeholders you know are not listening to us or not implementing but they may have their own constraints yeah because of which they are not able to take forward your ideas uh, and since you have not asked them you know obviously they are much more occupied busy than what we are and if you didn't ask them then they also possibly have that for the future but not able to implement right now yeah so our effort is to how best i can do on my side to ensure that my stakeholders are happy with me and okay. they get through <laughs> yeah yeah thanks rishti for being the opening bat woman for today yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, i will start with the you know the structure part and if you uh, uh, in fact uh, before the structure the 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 foundation of trust so uh, uh, two questions for all of you that uh, you know currently what is your thinking around uh, you know how do you build trust with your stakeholder or what is the importance that your client trust with you any of these responses that currently what is your approach to building trust how do you build trust with your stakeholders First is to be authentic and consistent. Okay. If you are not authentic, you'll not be able to build trust. Secondly, mm-hmm. is uh, relationship with people is more important than the the project or the task at hand. Very nice. And thirdly, is I think trust is developed over a period of consistent delivery of results. So if you keep doing what you have promised, actually, trust is that you delivered what you promised. Yeah. And if you keep doing it consistently, you will build it up. Yeah. But as you keep building it, it will take you time to build it. But it doesn't take you time to break yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Brigade, you are a champion on this subject, so I think I want the end user to more answer. But I, but I must also tell you that uh, the stable mm-hmm. thing, what you have discussed just now is something very good. I, I'm yeah. really impressed because it's covered everything. Yes. and so beautifully. And your model, I mean, like it's easy to remember now. So yes, yes. Thank yes. you for that. Yes, yes. So. so good so i think building on to what uh, you know social you said this is a very nice formula that i think uh, you know many of you might have uh, uh, you know uh, read this book by charles green you know so uh, it's called the trusted advisor not the trusted partner by charles green so i want to ask all of you and social uh, since you are a champion coach uh, trainer i think you know all the answers i would request our end user to maybe answer because that is where the learning for them will come here yeah. so uh, any uh, what's the distinction between credibility and reliability what do you mean by credibility and what do you mean by reliability anybody can give it a try i think uh... credibility is a much bigger uh, um, thing right like reliability is if you are able to deliver if somebody can rely on you to deliver what you have promised that's reliability okay credibility is something much 
above that when you are reliable consistently right. hmm. you build a credibility right you you build a credibility with various stakeholders that okay this person is um can deliver i mean i'm speaking my um, language of you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, language yeah. so you build a credibility that what you do is actually delivering impact uh so there is a uh, there is a clear distinction that i'm just going to talk about but maybe for the thank you gayatri we can give you a nice reaction so priya please give a reaction to gayatri and uh, uh, anybody else uh, in distinction between credibility and reliability yeah yogesh if i can take a crack at it uh, yes on the priya please uh, so i would uh, su- suggest that credibility is an outside in function of the stakeholders their perception mm-hmm. of the person or the leader whereas reliability is more a inside out view of the leader himself uh, in terms of his execute his or her execution delivery and always coming to the table with what's required so uh, the the two perspectives kind of differ with both of these uh, attributes that would be my take on it okay very nice Very nice. Uh, one last anybody before I really disclose what Charles Green taught us, and which is so simple and nice. I love the way uh, you know Charles has created this. Anybody else? One before I can I say something here? Yeah, please, yeah. Santa. Well, I think credibility refers to how credible am I when I say something, or I make a recommendation, or when I make a particular point. Mm-hmm. Uh, in other words. Uh, am i an sme for instance do mm-hmm. i understand the subject matter mm-hmm. uh you know do i come across as uh, strongly um knowledgeable mm-hmm. and experienced in the particular subject that is being discussed yeah mm-hmm. that's credible do i come across as credible um, mm-hmm. would would my would what i say be accepted by the stakeholder mm-hmm. uh, does yeah. he uh, and in terms of reliability i think it reliability is all about a consistency in what i say you know in other words am i walking my talk mm-hmm. uh, do do i do i uh do what i say and yeah. do i do it consistently yeah uh, do yeah. i follow through with my commitments on yeah. a regular basis yeah. yes 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 bang on bang on i think santa thank you so much uh, this is the exact definition that uh, charles green has shared so uh, credibility is also about the certification the domain the degree that you carry and reliability as you said is about uh, you know how do you essentially walk the talk and how do you keep your promises so many times uh, what i have seen uh, in my experience is that a lot of people are very good in reliability you know like for example uh if yogesh agiwal you know keeps up the time he comes for the webinar on time he does but he is not really read any book in last two years he does not bring in value for the client he is not credible so when you look at the other way there are a lot of people who are certified in 15 things but you know they never show up on time so the trust can get hampered on both sides and in fact in my uh, career uh, i had to you know when i had to lay off a lot of people or ask them to go when they were not paying attention to the credibility part which means that they were not uh, equipping themselves on the topic on the subject on the other hand so i always remember a very interesting experience at wipro that uh, we had a resume of a particular uh, you know database administrator who had 12 certification and which was matching with everything a client wanted and we almost had a premium pricing for him and our recruitment was super excited to get this guy and when i looked at his resume i saw that you know he had changed jobs every 2 3 months no not reliable so he was credible but not reliable so when you look at a client uh, in an, and how do you build reliability is you know with small small gestures which means that if shanta is my client and if i tell him that uh, you know let's meet next tuesday if i send him a calendar invite right after that meeting it helps me in building my reliability if i return the phone call the same day it helps build my reliability so these are small small gestures that charles green says that can really uh, build your trust with the client and as you mean that you have got credibility and you have got reliability what will make a difference to the stakeholder is the third part which is intimacy 
Now, intimacy is not really used uh, very commonly in the corporate term, but here it means that how close are you to the client and you have to put in your own strategy. So, for example, for me, I do a lot of work with, you know, Sahaja Yoga, meditation. I do with some work with students. So, every time I meet a client and if I see that, you know, his age is maybe 45, 50 and, you know, if I were to start knowing his personal background, I always offer that, you know, if your kid wants to, you know, explore an engineering college, I've got contacts in 50 colleges where I can get you in touch with the chairman or whoever you want to do. So the moment I offer this, the intimacy is built with the client. So on a very authentic uh, base, can you build the intimacy with the client? Yeah. And uh, the denominator is self-orientation, which means that, you know, assuming that invite all of you to Hyderabad, you know, and I say that uh, Shanta, Sushil, uh, Ishu, everybody, all the participants come over for a biryani party in Hyderabad you, and you come over at 6 o'clock and from 6 to 9.30 I only talk about myself the Azim Premji award, this award, that award will you come to my party again? Possibly no because it was full of self-orientation so the law of building trust with our stakeholder is 80-20 which means I will only speak for 20% of the time 80% I will let my stakeholders speak and that is the starting point of that so I have, uh, you know, put in a very nice table. And if you guys want to take a screenshot of this, I think you can take a screenshot of this. The idea is that how am I going to increase my credibility with my stakeholder? How will I increase my reliability with the stakeholder? So uh, assuming that today, if you look at your own domain, if you look at your own subject that you are working with, uh, when was the last certification you have taken or when was a last course that you have undergone or when was the last book that you have read so you can put that you know and when i am saying stakeholder one two three four you put the name of the stakeholder because every stakeholder might look at a different credibility from you so you need to start planning for that how, how will i increase my reliability with the stakeholder how will i improve my intimacy which means that it's a very conscious effort that you have to make to build the intimacy because Sometimes that is not easy for many people, you know, and how will I reduce my self-orientation, which means you have to be very conscious when you're with the stakeholders. So you can take a screen grab of this so that you can, you know, uh, put up your plan uh, as you go forward with that. So let's look at the first part, which is structure and style of the formula of trusted stable. So uh, here is a very nice quote by Alan Stern, where they took up everyone invested in your vision you have to back up a little bit and really analyze who different stakeholders are and what they individually respond to. Now, this is a very, very important element of, you know, how are you going to look at that? And, uh, and here is where I'm going to go a little bit deeper into giving you some set of questions. And when I look at stakeholders, there are two types of stakeholders. One is the influential stakeholders, which are like the sponsors, uh, you know, the steering committee members. And I'm not like every company will have their own terminology to use, you know, somewhere it might be steering committee, somewhere it might be board or whatever you may call it. But the idea is to make a distinction between uh, those stakeholders and the project stakeholders. And next slide, I'm going to talk about project stakeholders. So it is very important for us to know, you know, who is going to approve the funding, you know, who is going to approve the change, uh, what could stop this project, you know, from moving forward, or who is the who will benefit most from this? So if you have a, uh, you know, steering committee, you will have people coming from different, uh, you know, some of them may get nominated by the chairman, some of them may get nominated by the, uh, by the board themselves. So you're thinking around this. Now, uh, this is very important because a lot of people really don't, pay, and I can tell you one of our big clients in Pune, can you imagine the delivery managers of that client has no idea of you know who is going to approve the change request, which means that they have just left this to the finance team. Now, a stakeholder will not approve the cost unless they are convinced that there is a functional change that is not being shared earlier. And if you don't have that in your thinking, or if you don't keep that in your mind, you will never get the approval from the that stakeholder. So uh, these are some questions to start thinking. And when you go back you know, tonight or tomorrow, look at for yourself, you know, whatever role you're playing in, that have I asked this question, do I know the answer for that? 
and then go down into the project stakeholder, which is like slightly a uh, next level of thinking around that. You know, so in terms of like you know who is going to approve the contract for suppliers, you know what is who is the project budget, where did it start, you know who will be testing the end product, you know what are the uh, who are going to who will approve the function and technical requirements. So uh, don't just try and focus on only the area that you are technically working on because you may be great at your technology but are you able to really get the uh, various uh, various functions various groups uh, you know thinking so that uh, you know when you are finally moving you are knowing that what are my touch points that i am going to do that yeah so we are asking all these questions and uh, the reason is that this will give you a lot of insights into you know creating something like this you know which is like a map of the key players now here i think in this picture we have put too many numbers but the idea is to who are the key players who are the people who i really need to just look at their needs who are not as important and when i say important i'm not saying we have to ignore them but there could be certain department which are there only because as part of the you know as part of the nomination community or as part of the uh, uh, overall uh, uh, you know thinking around making it more holistic there are some people but they may not be really required so much but are you able to do that so in your own uh, project or program or what we are work you are doing you will have to start creating a map like this and when you are creating the map the next step would be to really look at you know what is the connection between them so for example if shanta and vishu are my classmate from my college and i know them for many many years and if i am stuck with say you know uh, if suppose if uh, priya is the project manager and priya knows that yogesh and shanta and vishu were uh, you know classmates in a college and if she wants anything to done with shanta there is a high chance that if she speaks to yogesh possibly yogesh can get that done so when you look at this particular influencing map and please don't mistake me that i am talking about creating any political uh, connections here but i am just saying that some of these at a human level is going to help you so if you if you first have that uh, stakeholder uh, mapping then you come to this where you basically draw the lines and this is just a sample that i am giving it to you that there are two axes to this one is the power axis other is the interest axis yeah and when i say that if you look at the legal department now he has to approve so many projects so many contracts how can you have interest in every project hence the power is high but the interest is low but if you look at training manager he really doesn't have much power because he doesn't hold any uh, budget or he is, but his interest is very high because today is training on java tomorrow is training on something else so when you start looking at this and maybe you are not inter interacting with the web standards guys so often but imagine you don't keep this particular guy Uh, in loop from the beginning, and you don't give his up, give him enough time to approve your uh, your particular uh, framework. You might get stuck. He might not approve, and you will not be able to finally get there. So your ability to understand the power and the interest and map those that you have done here, so that in your project planning, uh, you know you are essentially ensuring that. the right people when i am say that you might have an activity called getting the standards approved but you have not built the trust with this guy so if you don't build the trust he is not going to really uh, give you certain advices or he is not going to uh, take as much of uh, uh, you know uh, time as you as it would be if you had used the trust formula yeah so now i am trying to uh, say that when you do that part this part becomes really very helpful to you so i'll take a pause here any thoughts so far anything that you would like to share with me on whatever we have covered on the structure and the and the style part or the style structure part says style i'm still going to cover now yeah any thoughts so far is it making making sense for all of you one question yogesh how yeah, should i take a say how do you define power and what do you mean by interest so for example if you look at this particular example yeah now finance 
in some ex, uh, way has got lot of power but when i say interest is that they may be approving finance for 15 projects it is very impossible for them to take interest in every project yeah so uh, for us these two departments or the web standard guy is very important he has got lot of power unless you get his go ahead you will not be able to move forward yeah so don't mistake that they are not caring about your project but but the sheer time that they have on hand and there is no need for them to know every so they are not as excited about your project because the finance guy may sometimes approve a web development project sometimes he may approve a testing project so it is just not feasible for him to take interest in every project so his interest from that perspective yeah similarly the networking and security guy lot of powerful unless you get the security protocol cleared you can deploy the production uh, you know on to the customer site so you might have 15 request you know lined up for him and unless you have build the relationship with him he might just go by the queue or he might not take that interest that he would otherwise if you build the relationship with the person so power is in terms of budgets and approvals is it yes it could be that it could be they holding certain responsibility because without which the project project can't move forward so if you are creating a website if the standards are not approved you can't take forward okay yeah but if you look at here on this side change manager project manager are both high on power as well as high on interest yeah so my idea was to uh, you know start you guys to think you know about this stakeholder management in a very wider sense you know where i see personally that very senior people have not really uh, paid enough attention to this area and lot of our problems come because you have not handled this well mm -hmm. yeah so i think you can you know when you go back uh, you can create your own map and on leadership chaska you can i mean you can share in case you want to uh, you know uh, look at that so uh, so the influencing map will help you to really see who who are powerful and uh, and and i'm going to now move to the style part uh, which i spoke about the you know disk framework i think uh, some of the facilitators who are here essentially you know know about this but those who are new to this it's a very beautiful framework by uh, william maston and uh, he essentially uh, you know sat in the mall and he used to observe you know lot of this people when they came to the mall on how do they interact and how do they converse and uh, so he said broadly you can divide them into humanity into four parts uh, d i s c so dominance influence steady and compliance when you look at this two axes uh, one axis is people who are task focused and the opposite of that is people who were people focused yeah and then uh, there are the other axis is the the ask axis which means they will ask lot of questions and here they will tell lot of question so you can see that uh, a person who is task focused and who tells you to do something is dominance person who is people focused and keeps telling or who brings in lot of energy is influence and somebody who is people focused and ask is steady and compliant so to quickly give you an idea so i always explain this with uh, my own example of uh, so my wife uh, you know she is uh, you know somebody who is c which means that she is very data driven yeah so any time you want to buy anything uh, you know she would always uh, you know put in an excel sheet and put in all the numbers do a lot of research and then you know finally put the weighted average and finally decide to buy a car or whatever white goods um if you look at me i am more like i'll ask vishu that hey, vishu which car do you have and i'll ask sushil and i'll ask maybe priya and maybe whatever car they have i will maybe go and buy because i'm very people focused person uh, now imagine if you know there could be such a big misunderstanding between me and my wife because i would say that when vishu is saying this why are you even contesting this but in reality she has no problem with vishu the need of her is data which means unless she has the data validity she can't take action the third is 
about the people who are you know like d you know who are very results focused you know they are people who may look to be very rude to you so when you go to their office they will not have you know any water bottle or place to sit and they will immediately get on to work they will not say if i travel from here to bangalore they will not even ask that you know was your flight all right uh, you know did you had any trouble but they will immediately start let's start the project discussion so you might if somebody who is an i might misunderstand the d that he is not caring for me and the last part is somebody who are like who don't like you know too much of fast changes uh, they are very humanly they want to make sure that everybody is happy with the decision but what may happen is that a dominance guy may find a steady guy to be uh, goalless you know they may feel that they have no goal in life but in reality that's not the case so when you're dealing with this four types of uh, you know stakeholders what should be my style of dealing with them so if i am uh, if i am working with a compliance stakeholder i need to send them lot of reports i need to send them a uh, lot of uh, data i need to send them fact sheet so that uh, they are very happy with that now uh, all of us also has a uh, dominant style which means all of us has got all four but one is dominant so imagine if i am an i who don't really look at data as much as c i might find a stakeholder with compliance c is uh, somebody who's putting spock in everything that I, that i want to do they will say that we cannot move this project unless we have the signed agreement in place whereas then i might say that i hey, will get the agreement tomorrow no let's start the work yeah so you might misunderstand a c stakeholder if you are an i similarly if a stakeholder has come for a meeting and he never ask anybody anything you know he just like getting on the task immediately you might find that stakeholder to be very rude but that's not the case they may be really good at heart but their style is d which means that those are the people who don't like to waste time on having any small talk anything they ask on the other hand so if you are dealing with a d stakeholder make sure that you go fully prepared when you're meeting with d stakeholder don't you know even i have seen stakeholder that even if your laptop takes about a minute to boot they may just not have that much of patience to tell you that they'll say okay we'll review this next time so when you're working with a d dominant stakeholder so when you're writing an email to a uh, dominant stakeholder don't write you know happy diwali how are you you know regards have you no they don't like all that they directly come to the point say that your project status is so and so completion date is so and so and that's it don't write uh, good uh, good morning regard all that. they don't like all that yeah just just be to the point so your ability to and i am just giving you a very very quick uh, brief on this but i would request all of you to google on or maybe you know go to youtube and look at some of these videos very very powerful you know you will in fact uh, when you understand disk very nicely uh, you will never get upset with any stakeholder you know in fact when you meet the stakeholder you will start in your mind that what kind of style my stakeholder is so if i go to some of my clients and when i go to their office and i see that there are a lot of books there are a lot of journals there are a lot of papers in the the stakeholder is asking you questions like when did crossover start uh, how many people do you have how many client do you have the chances are that is a c type if the stakeholder comes and receives me at the reception and ask me that hope your flight was all right did you had lunch can we go for lunch today the chances are that he is an i type yeah similarly if you know if he doesn't come and directly he comes in uh, you know comes to the point uh, then he is a d type so uh, my ability to flex my style to my stakeholder style can go a long way because you will uh, two things will happen one is that you will not misunderstand any stakeholder because now you know that if he is c he will ask for data he will ask for approval if it is i he will first ask for lunch dinner discussion before he starts on the work so if you are d or if you are c and if you are going to i you might again misunderstand that so recognize your style and uh, you know flex your style to the stakeholder so here another table if you want to take a picture of this uh, which you can continue building whatever you have had in the in the earlier section so when we looked at the structure uh, you start putting it you know so for stakeholder 1 uh, 
where are they placed in the hierarchy what is the power level what is their interest level what is their dominant style are they d what is my current style so if they are d i am i uh, what will i do in future to you know really uh, flex my style and what will it take me to the new level of engagement so it's a very beautiful table and as you can see that if you start building on this very nicely what would happen eventually is that you will uh, start uh, you know building such a uh, good relationship with the stakeholder that you will never see any program failing because everything will learn start running smooth but this groundwork has to be done before yeah so uh, we looked at the structure style we started with trust as our foundation and then now look at time and tide as i was saying that what should be your timing of you know your uh, your communication to the uh, you know to the stakeholders so uh, you know uh, what we are saying here is that you have to be very mindful about you know your uh, your communication to stakeholder that what is the timing uh, you know how frequently that you want to say uh, you know all that has to be thought through now some of these may be there in your best practices or in your past uh, Uh, you know project experience but we don't want to just go with that every time you are dealing with a stakeholder start doing that part and this is like i just thought i will talk about the who you know communication and i am saying this because this was also i thought is a good example to communicate that how their communication to the world as a stakeholder had such an impact during covid time yeah so if we had proper communication from who on the pandemic i think we would not have had that situation on the other hand the way india responded to the to the covid in the way uh, communication happened in the way uh, the whole certificate was rolled out the vaccines were rolled out so it's a very classic example of who and india on the communication so we we become the stakeholder for the who and for india as a world yeah so uh, many times we don't look at the public relationship manager uh, role that we have to play uh, you know a, as a role in our program in your, in our program so uh, i want to say that we want to become a pr manager uh, you know and uh, i'm just asking so if i were to do a workshop this is a full day workshop that i do with our clients i really spend time on understanding the pr role in the organization and how what are the impact of that you know which means that how are you going to use the pr part to communicate you know so managing the expectation uh, collaborating with different groups to do planning your communication uh, including some of the concerns in the communication evaluating the quality of our communication what is going to the stakeholder so when you do this you are essentially engaging with a lot of your stakeholders to find out so you are exploring and engaging with uh, you know with the stakeholders to find out ki what are some of their expectation and once you have done that you are trying to formalize so you are building the communication formalizing it and evaluating uh, from time to time that is the communication that i am sending with people is that really working out well and that is the case then can i institutionalize that because what we also want to do remember that in the trusted stable one of the last element is about leaving a legacy and if i want to leave a legacy i want to also start institutionalizing the communication which means the best experience of my previous project should actually get institutionalized which means the new team that is going to get in should really follow what i have learned but not as a uh, strict standard template but as much as you can use to institutionalize that so that was the you know the closure of this of time and tide where i say that ramp up when there is an urgency so if you really know know that there is an issue Uh, but scale down if things are going smooth yeah don't just follow the same pattern because remember the stakeholders you know really uh, you know always would have uh, you know too many things on their plate to be done so your ability to recognize that your ability to ensure that uh, when there is a need you are really tiding high when there is no you are in low tide and you have the timing anyway decided in the front yeah so that was the time and tide and now i and i know i'm since it's a webinar i am moving little bit fast and not involving in every section but i really want to uh, take you all through this beautiful model so that when you go back you can fully implement for your for your project so 
as we saw we looked at structure we looked at style we looked at the time and tide and now we look at the articulate and acknowledge so when you look at this i think you should really formulate a plan you know that uh, who are you going to really communicate what are you going to communicate why are you communicating and how are you communicating so each of these sections you know i am going to briefly talk about so as you can see by now uh, you know the stakeholder management that you know that initially uh, you know most people have thought about is just updating our seniors is now becoming such a detailed uh, you know uh, process that if you do all this there is no way that your project will not succeed so who are my stakeholders yeah so it could be like client third party team member senior so uh, now slowly i am also getting into the detailing on the other side you know when i am saying this even my team members are my stakeholders so while we always have the regular communication process going but now you are trying to bring in that together with what you are coming to communicate to the stakeholder yeah uh, what are we communicating yeah so what are the communication requirement you know that you are going to do so while on one hand we are going to institutionalize but we are going to also constantly look at what are the requirements of communication so whether it is a push communication pull and i'm going to show you a very nice uh, you know nice table Uh, i think i would like you all to take a screenshot of that and it's very useful to think about you know that you don't always need to do push communication you can actually provide certain information such a way that whenever the stakeholder wants they can actually go and take a look at it and i'll talk about that uh, why are we communicating i think uh, that I, you know since i have spoken from the beginning that uh, it is very important to keep keep the communication going because if you constantly keep the uh, keep the importance with your stakeholder you will never have the stakeholder getting upset with you and the last part is the how part and i'm going to uh, talk about that table that i was mentioning that uh, how will i communicate and how can i improve my communication so here is a table that i want you all to take a look at it it's a very very nice table where we talk about full communication is like one way you know like in the sense that uh these are website blog social media pages so whatever you have in your own uh, program uh, you can start now thinking about communication differently you know so some could be push communication where you are actually sending the communication via newsletter via webcast via project infographics and there could be some controlled discussion channel like you know your surveys your feedback reports your focus group discussion webinars and then active engagement where you essentially have informal you know meetings with the with the stakeholders uh, the project meeting that we have so the idea is that when i start opening up so much so many engagement channels uh, there is uh, the stakeholder experience is so powerful that they never feel that they have uh, not uh, got properly informed about anything because all this is and, and you have got different opportunities to start you know plugging in your uh, updates so and you have to start now linking with the time and tide which means that uh, what of that should go in which of the communication channel and that becomes very powerful for you and uh, i think uh, uh, this is the part that i always find it very very important that all of us should uh, you know make sure that we have that in our mind that i think this meetings when we have with the stakeholder are very very powerful for us to really prepare well and in my experience i have seen that lot of times people don't fully prepare for the stakeholder meeting so before the meeting i have seen a uh, lot of times people go unprepared uh, they are not fully ready with that so one is pre meeting uh you know what preparation you should you should do and i'm going to just come to the last part which is also handling difficult you know stakeholders so if you prepare well then you can manage them well in the meeting and what are the action items in post meeting now you link this back with the trust formula that we spoke earlier yeah so if you are in the post the meeting if you take all the action items that you had uh, you know you had agreed that builds your cred uh, uh, reliability part yeah if you go prepared uh, before the meeting that helps you build your credibility part and obviously now since we know all the styles of the people you can actually also bring in the intimacy part which means that with the i style 
maybe you know i would uh, possibly take him out for dinner if the c style i will give him lots and lots of data to look at yeah so that's how you are doing so when you look at this uh, uh, you know this chart again i think as i'm trying to build on this you are now going to look at what you know how am i going to articulate how am i going to take the acknowledgement from from them so that way you know i there is not a time when the stakeholder is not really uh, aware of whatever i wanted to communicate and get their acknowledgement in place yeah and uh, we'll go to the last part which is the uh, you know bold and brief which is as i was saying that uh, many a times there could be situation where i think uh, we have to uh, very boldly communicate to the stakeholder that this timeline or within this budget uh, i think this cannot happen now uh, there are many reasons why which we don't feel empowered to uh, say in front of our stakeholder but sooner or later i think it is going to come out if you don't do it on time so when you are doing that uh, many a times if you don't go fully prepared then you will go all over the place but how can you be bold but also brief which means that the stakeholders really are very impatient when they are listening to a very very detailed conversation so am i be bold so uh, be bold be heard be noticed and be successful so don't get worried about that part and when you are dealing with that bold part you will also see there are people because those situation will come only when there is a difficult situation and these are some you know bullet points for us to you know remember that how bold does not mean aggression we have to be graceful we you know and the best way to you know handle such difficult uh, conversation uh, stakeholder is about the fifth point which is using data and statistics to drive your points so if you want that you know the timeline cannot be agreed so you bring in some data of the past project and you know get to display in front of the stakeholder so these are points uh, i mean i'm not going to go in detail on each point but the uh, main point is that be data focused be prepared and then you know i think storytelling using visuals uh, you know can be very important to uh, get ensure that you know your point is heard in a very brief manner you know so if you take uh, take some time out to prepare well in the presentation you can actually be bold but brief in the presentation so this again a table to prepare us for the bold and here in my uh, recommendation to the participant always i tell them that um, i think we have to learn from our experience stakeholders so see in the last conversation or the sharing meeting how bold i was was i in all over the place or was i uh, really quick in my that and that will help you to become better and i think i'll just come to the last part we are at 515 so we have another 10 15 minutes which i would keep it open for any conversation i want you all to also ask me anything uh, that is not uh, not clear from all this or anything that you have in mind this is the last part which is um, you know there are two things that i think you know if we can if you want to leave a legacy with our uh, with our stakeholders is by building a you know shared consciousness and when the shared consciousness is that uh, at a very ontological level you know do i do my stakeholders really feel uh, you know so nice and connected with me that uh, no matter which project comes but they say that yaar yogesh ke sath hi kaam karna hai ya you know i want to work with this team only is because we have to create that common pur- pur- purpose with every stakeholder irrespective of what has been their past experience so many a times if a stakeholder has not had a great experience you know with a particular geography or particular vertical they always carry that baggage with them so can i really uh, you know take away that baggage and create a new experience from them and uh, the trusted stable model that you have saw if you systematically start doing that part and start building the trust with them uh, for sure they will uh, you know want to work with you and you can leave a legacy with them so constantly creating that purpose with them and then building a trust with them uh, will help us to leave the legacy so i just uh, uh, stop sharing the screen and open up for any reflection conversation yeah can i make a point yogesh yeah please listen <laughs> okay 
Uh, so um, I was uh, very uh, intently listening to the disk profiling portion. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to share, uh, possibly uh, you already know about it. Uh, there's a very beautiful artificial intelligence uh, tool called Crystal Nose. Crystal uh, Nose, okay. Crystal Nose, C-R-Y-S-T-A-L and okay. then K-N-O-W-S. Ah, oh, okay. Crystal Nose. So Crystal Nose is a, a Chrome add-on which mm -hmm. works on LinkedIn. Okay. And, uh, if you install it and then if you click it on the LinkedIn profile of anyone, mm -hmm. it will actually... Uh, crawl through the entire profile of a person and it will make predictive recommendations of what is the disk profiling of the person and based on that profiling, what words you should speak, what emails you should write based on your stage of uh, uh, stakeholder management. Are you in a, a, pro a prospecting stage? Are you doing a deal nego? Are you closing? Are you discussing? Based on that, it will give you predictive analytics email templates, conversation mm -hmm. words. Wow. Uh, it's a <laughs> wonderful very, tool. It links to Gmail. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, with one Gmail uh, account, it will give you 10 free profiles. And after that, it will ask you for a licensing uh, subscription okay. kind of thing. Okay. So um, uh, given the flow of what you are sharing, <laughs> uh, it can be very, very valuable that you kind of diagnose your patient before you even walk in into a meeting. So I just thought I'll share that uh, with uh, you and everyone. Very nice. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Brilliant, brilliant. I can, we can give a nice virtual uh, webinar clap to our Professor Sandeep. Yes, 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 yes. Very nice. Thank Lovely. you. Thank you. No, yeah. Good, good. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Hey, Yogesh, I, I felt very nice actually. It's a very nice framework and stitches a lot of things in a very nice flow. <laughs> I would say it makes garland out of the beads. Yes, yes, yes. And Vishu coming from you is fantastic because <laughs> we have Krishna also here. So you yes, guys are the yes. champion on this. So uh, and uh, and Vishu literally, you know, I, I tell you that this particular framework I literally put in the, the way I manage at Vipro, you know, like just put in yeah. my thoughts. There was no reference to any book, nothing. Exactly. Just, you can see it's coming from experience. Yes, yes. And, and I wanted to make it very simple for everybody because this stakeholder management is a big issue in general, you know, and mm. uh, you know. People don't know how to go about it. We are very upset with and so there are two sides, you know. The stakeholders are upset with people, people are upset with the stakeholders. They are saying mm -hmm. that you know they are very arrogant, they're not supportive, and the stakeholders say that we're not just enjoying working with the project teams. So yeah. this <laughs> yeah, Krishna. Yeah. And uh, yeah, one of the common things we see is uh, a lot of times they tend to view all stakeholders same. But yes. I think it's beautifully kind of, you know, uh, kind of categorize those stakeholders and what each yes. person is kind of yes, actually. Yes. And, and uh, Krishna, the way you run your case studies, right? In the one day workshop, we have got like 12 case studies of like people okay. where we bring in the guy, you know, and in one of our participants, uh, you know, when we taught this, they shared a very interesting experience with us. They said that there was one stakeholder group where they were like generally very good. There was no major problem, but they always felt that there is no intimacy that is there. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, they started using a disk profile and in like three months, I think it was so fantastic. The C guy was happy. The I was good with lunches and D was happy that the meeting is ending on time. And S was happy that <laughs> everybody got the T first, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. Right. Oh, I mean, one more thing, Yogesh, I mean, uh, I just got, you know, could rec recall your yes. bold and brief. You know, like I think we were running a couple of uh, programs and a lot of participants came back and said, look, you know, every time we send a status report, you know, like everybody says, yeah, 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 no problem and so on. But still at the end of six months, I get a very bad customer satisfaction. <laughs> and uh, so we went in a little bit detail and, you know, they all realized that nobody is bothered to look at this, their reports yeah. because either one, they are not able to get what they want. Yes. Or it's like too detailed and, and you know, people don't have time. Yes. yes right. Yes. So it was a very, you know, kind of revealing thing for them. Yes. That, you know, we need to look at these stakeholder needs. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very nice. And so uh, Bill and Bill and also I think, yeah, 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 Praveena. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. After, yeah. after you complete. Yeah. yeah Praveena, I think, had raised her hand. So. Uh, yeah. 
Thank you, uh, Yogesh. It was a wonderful session. Actually, we were talking about bold and brief. So I had a question there. You mentioned that for different stakeholders, we can, you know, uh, have a chart prepared that uh, how bold we need to be. Mm -hmm. So just wanted, you know, if you can just uh, quote an example that, you know, because I'm not really sure how can I rate myself uh, mm -hmm. that with which stakeholder, how much do I need to, you know, give how, how bold means like how can we rate it? <laughs> So, uh, I don't know, generally as a facilitator, I say, what do you guys think to the, to the group here? You know? <laughs> uh, anyway, Vishnu, Krishna, I, I think... think uh, Pravina can at least uh, open the video uh, for a start, Yogesh. That yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, bold. Uh, but the starting point is opening with the bold video. So, yeah, if, so, uh, if you're uh, not venturing outside your yeah, comfort yeah, zone... Yeah. Yeah. Then but, we are only uh, talking. We are not. Yeah, talking. yeah, yeah. Anymore. And I think yeah, maybe uh, Professor <laughs> Sandeep and then maybe uh, Vasudev can also share. Yeah. Yeah. So my interpretation of being bold is being very confident with what you are stating, yeah. and that needs to be backed up with data, logic, and industry examples. Industry yeah. relevant to that customers or stakeholders' industry. Yes. Because the moment uh, you have this, there is a very solid locus standi or basis sure. for whatever we are saying. That allows us to be bold. And of yeah. course, brief is simple. Uh, yeah. Summarize everything and only answer if anybody wants some detail <laughs> or asks a question. Yes, yes, yes. So, Pravina, uh, yeah, I think uh, maybe uh, Vasudha and then Vishu, you can also share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, thank you very much, Yogesh. Mm -hmm. yeah. every, every lecture of yours has been very nice. I'm only yeah. sorry to join half, uh, half from half. No, no, you're, you're yeah. a repeat yeah. customer yeah. Every, every webinar. Uh, yes. Thank you so much for joining. I, mean, I, I missed uh, the first half, but let me tell you, I my stakeholders are my funding agencies. I run an NGO. Yeah. Oftentimes, I find it very difficult even to approach because unless a person whose name is known, they do not pick up the phone. They mm. don't answer the WhatsApp. And you send an email, you don't get a response. Mm -hmm. And you, I'm, uh, with some, with one, one senior person who has donated quite well, who is 80 years old, he has high sharp temper. Mm. You, you, you say once again, he will <laughs> call at you. He'll say, <laughs> I, you, you know, when I sent two photographs of something for which he had sponsored, mm. he said, why do, you, why do you dump so many photos? Send only one, that's enough. You know, <laughs> sometimes they're they are very rude just because I'm in the receiving end. Mm. Maybe, maybe as you rightly said, you must, uh, you, sometimes I need to be meek, I need to be uh, less bold and probably, I mean, this is something very, very interesting actually. Yes. I, yes. I don't know. How many of our friends are, are into uh, this type of uh, fund mobilization and mm -hmm. uh, other contacts? I think many of them are executives where they run their industry, but mm -hmm. mine is a very particular area. I, yeah. I think I need a lot, a lot more uh, inputs from you. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll come to your office once. Yes, please, please, please have a one-on-one -on -one discussion. More than welcome. Yeah, Vasu, Vishu, you want to say something? Yeah, on the bold, I think it's a very important question. I feel bold should be perceived from the receiver's point of view, not from the transmitter point of view. <laughs> this, is, this is, it's not about I being bold and loud and whatever. Yes. Yeah. Because communication is a transmission plus reception. If yeah. I, it's only communication, I mean, it's only <laughs> transmission, there is no use. Yeah. So it goes back to the disc profile or whatever the style the other person has, understanding yes. that and tuning my boldness with respect to that actually. Yes, 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 yes. And Pavina, I think my uh, generally request is that, you know, try this out in the coming week itself because after the webinar, the josh is very high. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, hey, uh, you know, try Karo and then you keep posted, you talk to Yogini and I can also maybe... Uh, help you. Uh, we day in and day out we do this only, so we are more than welcome to help you with that. Yeah. I'm sure, Yogesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Thank you so much. Uh, you. Yeah, good. I think we have Shristi. Yeah, Shristi, please. Sorry for bombarding all the questions. Please, 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 please. <laughs> um, so I, I remember you said that our team members are also our stakeholders. 
at yes. some point of time so yeah. on the on a matrix of let's say your power interest where do you see them or where would you generally place them oh high interest they may not have but my idea there was you know shishti that hmm. see when i was in wipro you know i was like i mean i had 750 people which was at that time a big number and i had like 18 to 20 accounts to manage so my thinking hmm. was that you know i would never take so much of load on myself you know so all the team members i would like completely communicate about every steering committee meeting if possible take them along with me uh, they have a complete view on that so many times uh, as leaders we take too much of load on ourselves and my request to people is to share with your team uh, barring something that you know financially you don't want to disclose but other than that i think you can uh, have a communication plan with your team fully so they are almost there with you when you are going for the so because i have seen that when you are dealing with so many projects uh, you tend to not be uh, you know you start generalizing some things and your team can caution you so this team na you take this will be very helpful you do this it will be very helpful yeah, uh, yeah. yeah so that is my point you don't take too much a lot but share with the team get them to also say that you know what do you think about this stakeholder you know if you are, they get a chance to meet and okay. not from a uh, not from really uh, you know uh, uh, back stabbing or talking mm-hmm. about anybody but essentially to make the stakeholder happy with what we are doing okay so let's say this um, particular team member and i am working on a project then again they are they are on high interest but may not have that power to change the project right so yes 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 because that high interest can help you with uh, with the powerful input that they can give you yeah okay okay yeah. in fact i remember one of my you know like like the way vasudev said right his uh, stakeholder is very upset with the two photo so mm-hmm. we had a uh, you know where is a stakeholder who you know whenever he would get angry his right eye side would start flickering <laughs> so my team member said that he will sit on the right hand side and the moment his eyes flicker i'll pick the glass and he drink water so i will know that he is getting to go angry and that time i'll keep quiet and just listen to him so it's a very powerful way to manage the stakeholder otherwise i am presenting here his right eye i can see because he is sitting on the table my mom will give me a signal sir abhi chup baitho wo abhi chillane wala hai Yeah, and very self-taught. Just listen, and he had so valid inputs. Only problem was you know, he used to use some very foul language. But forget about the foul language. His observation was super. And why was he upset? Because he was not happy with the kind of work that we had done, the analysis we have done. So we would never up, get upset. We would never get upset with his foul language. We only pay attention to what he is saying. That was wealth of knowledge for us. Uh, and over the period he become one of our main proponent because everybody else will talk about his foul language we will not talk about his inputs mm. okay so <laughs> isn't it so the guy so look at what each table trick can give you that should be our you know and that's the legacy you want to leave basically uh, never take it personally person not at all not at all yeah. apna focus is our project isn't it mm. Mm. Yeah. Very well said. Yeah. I think we yeah, we had five twenty nine. Uh, I'm I'm happy to stay back, but I think those who have other appointments can. Yeah. And I really want to thank everybody for making our webinar so successful. It is, uh, and I remember like the first webinar we had only twenty two registration, eleven showed up. Today we had a hundred plus, and every time I have so many repeat clients coming. So thank you all those uh, who have been joining us. Thanks, Yogesh. It was thank wonderful. You. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Like to drop yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. Please. We should. We'll meet up Bye. again. Yeah, Brian, you want to say yeah? Last yeah. but not the least, Yogesh. Your yeah. Talk, does the, uh, does the age matter? Does yeah. the age matter when you really ha- interact with a younger generation, where you, you, I mean, the attitude of the other person is not so uh, mm-hmm. nice or uh, actually liked by you? Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. you feel offended? Yeah. Is it is it wrong with age or I don't know? Probably. <laughs> that also can have a can be one of the factors yeah yeah brian you can answer both the question vasudev no, no, no. i don't want to attempt some <laughs> age is something that i uh, also use to my advantage to respond to 
uh, Mr. Chaturvedi. I had a panga with the RTO. I was transferring my vehicle from Hyderabad to Karnataka, and they were raising so many objections. So finally, my age won over. So <laughs> really? Can be an advantage. Oh, yes. <laughs> They, they have cleared that. But I had an observation, uh, Yogi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Your sure. talk took me back uh, aeons into, you know, the old days where we used to write memos to get sanctions in the yeah. old ECS. And uh, I could see the handwriting of my bosses. Yeah. They were very brief. They would say, ha, ya, na. They would yeah. ask questions in the memo. And it would leave such a trail that it was a great education. And I'm seeing how that legacy now you have converted to, you know, credibility, reliability, intimacy. Absolutely. So all couched in that. So it revived. Like you said, you know, you threaded the beads for the garland. <laughs> yes, yes. And I didn't know that it was, uh, you know, threaded like this. So thank you yeah. very much. And yeah, yeah. No, Brian, I think thank you so much. I'm so glad that uh, and Pushpa is here, Sakshi is here, Priya is here, uh, Ankita, a lot of our Tritima, 